Welcome to MAT 2LB, booklet number three, decimals, percent, and tax, lesson number two, introducing percents. So percents, and you've heard people talk about percents um, in the real world when they talk about giving 110% in math class, or if they talk about a 15 or 20% tip, or if they're talking about a percentage increase or decrease in the price of something. Um, so percents are based on 100 parts. That's actually what the word percent means. It means per 100 pieces. So if your work is 75% complete, then what you want to imagine is that your work has been broken up into 100 little tiny parts and 75 of them have been already finished. So there's a few different ways that we can go about thinking about percents. Um, let's start by looking at this one really large square that actually has 100 squares in it. And if we look inside there, we'll notice that there are 10 here that are shaded in, 10 beside it that are shaded in, which is 20, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are a total of 24 shaded pieces out of 100. So how do we go about expressing percents? The first way is really straightforward. You'll notice that little sign right there with those two little sort of zeros and a slash through them. That is a percentage sign. And if we were going to write out 24%, that would be the place to do it. So we would write that as... 24%. That's what that symbol means. A second way to write a percent is as a fraction, where the number of shaded parts is the numerator and the number total number of parts is the denominator. So if we're talking about percents, the total number of parts is always going to be 100, and the number of shaded parts in the case of this big square is going to be 24. So that's the main part of our lesson today is to consider how can we express percents in different ways? So let's have a look at the first example. Example number one asks us, what is the amount of the shaded area written as a percent and as a fraction? So let's have a look at this first sort of biggish square. Now again, we know there's 100 squares here in total. Let's figure out how many are actually shaded in. So we'll get my highlighter again. We know that each row is 10, so there's 10, 20, 30, 40, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have 47 squares shaded in total out of 100. So let's write that as a percentage first. We would write that as 47. And then we write down this percentage symbol, which is that little circle, sort of a horizontal or a diagonal line rather, and another little circle. If we were going to write this as a fraction, we would write the number of shaded parts, which is 47, over the total number of parts which is 100, when we're talking about percents. Let's have a look at the second square. So what I'd like us to do here in the second square, I'd like you to hit pause and count up the number of squares that are shaded in in this second example. And when you've got that done, come on back, we'll see how you did. So hit pause and go for it. Okay, you're back. Hopefully you have counted up 90 squares. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine rows of 10 different squares shaded in, that's gonna give us our 90. So how do we go about writing that? Again, we can write it as 90% or we can write that as the number of shaded parts, which is 90, over the total number of parts, which is 100. And there's our second square. So I'd like you guys, at this point, to hit pause in the video, and I'd like you to take a crack at this third square on your own. So hit pause, count up the number of shaded spots, write it as both a percentage and as a fraction, and then come on back, we'll see how you did. Okie doke, you're back. So this row doesn't even have 10, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces shaded in, so that's going to give us a total of nine percent and written as a fraction we would write this as nine parts out of 100 total parts so that's how we go about writing percentages as a percent and as a fraction example number two shows us sort of a multiple choice scenario where we get to do a little bit of problem solving and see if we can figure out which of these four squares is showing us 33 percent shaded in so let's have a look at this and see if we can figure it out 33% would be three rows and then three extra ones. So there's a couple that we can knock off right off the bat. 
This one right here has way more than 33, whoops, way more than 33 shaded in. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40. That's way more than we are going to need for 33. So we can write this one off, not figure number two. So if we scooch back and have another look, we'll find that figure one is actually similar in size. We have 10, 20, 30, 40. And again, that's over 33 squares that we need shaded in. So figure one is also not it. So we've narrowed it down to figure three and four. Here I want you to hit pause, see if you can get the right answer. When you think you've got it, come on back. We'll see how you did. All right. Hopefully you've looked ahead and realized that this figure four has got 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3. This is our correct solution, 33%. This one over here, it has 10, 20, 1, 2, 3. So this one's got 23%, not what we are after. So if we head back to the question itself, we can circle figure four as being the correct answer. And this is the end of lesson number two. So now's the time when you'll head off to the worksheet. If you want to look back over this lesson, please feel free to do so. And I will see you in lesson number three.